Happy Sunday to us. I am so sorry about the network uh, about four or five hours ago on my way to church. It was really bad. And I see that people were not hearing my voice. So sad. But it's okay. It is what it is. We give God the praise. It's a wonderful Sunday. Yeah, yes, yes. Please invite somebody else right now. Today is Sunday. I know most people are about going to bed for activities of the week to start work tomorrow. But I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to stay too long today because also I need to rest. So let's just share 10, 15, maximum of 45 minutes of praise and worship in the presence of the Lord. And we all can go about our business. May the Lord bless us. In Jesus' name. Consume me from inside and out, Lord. Sister Jacinta, thank you. Welcome on board. Oh, my sister Malian from Dallas. No, longest time. How are you? She does say you're welcome on board. Please invite someone and share share. Moment of praise. Just for 20, 30 minutes, let's acknowledge God. Happy Sunday to us. Please, if you don't mind, tell us where you're watching from. Let us thank God for today. Amen. And if you can hear me, please say something. God of my soul. Amen. If you can hear me, please say something. I did a quick one while I was going to church. There was no volume. I don't know what happened. It's the muted my, my broadcast, but it's okay. God is faithful. We're giving the praise. Please say something so I know you can hear me. Invite someone else at this time. Moments of praise and worship. That's all I want to do. We don't have the right to copyright these songs. It's playing through the TV on YouTube. So let us encourage each other. exalt the name of the Lord. Let's uplift each other's spirits today before we will start our new week. I'm looking for a song that will bring our spirits up right now. Okay, let's do our sister. Let's do our sister and see if you are listening to the sound of DJ Yes. Ray. Let's do African music. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for joining on board, sis. Amen. Consume fire. Worship God this morning. Yes. Consuming fire is our God. 
We want to do our praise today before we start our new week. If you can hear me, please say something. Even in the deepest time, it will manifest itself. You are the rock of human fire. Come and manifest yourself. Yes, Lord. Manifest yourself among us. Happy Sunday to every one of you. If you can hear me say something, because I don't know what's going on today. You know, I went on Facebook earlier, like five hours ago, while I was going to church, but the volume was muted. I didn't even know, but I tried to bring it up, but it's okay. If you can hear me, just say amen or something, so I will know you can hear me, and I will know that we're communicating. 
May the Lord be glorified. Today is a blessed day. Today is a wonderful day. Today is a special day. Today is like a bad day to you and I. Today is a, a day to remember. Because guess what? We all are alive in the land of the living. It is a day to praise God. There is no better day to praise Him. There is no better moment to praise the Lord. There is no better timing to praise the Lord. This time is wonderful. It is excellent that we praise the Lord right now because we have the breath of life. It could have been worse, but the grace, the grace, the grace of God is so sufficient. This is the moment. There is no better moment than this for us to worship God. There is no better time for us to praise God. There is no better time for us to acknowledge Him. No better time for us to say, thank you, Jesus. Every time we see the brightness of the day, we have to be first and be applied to praise God. No matter what we are going through, any moment we see the brightness of the day, we we'll owe God that praise and worship. Especially those that are going through challenges right now, especially those that are facing some hard moment, especially those that have loved someone that they care so much about, especially those that have no hope at this particular time. Our God is our hope. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can hear me, you just type something. Say amen or something, you know, so we can know that you're hearing me. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Please say something. What is it that you're going through since yesterday till now? There's a song that said, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. We have to enter this week with thanksgiving and praise. We have to enter this week with adoration and praise. We have to enter this week appreciating God. We have to enter this week knowing that there is nothing impossible with him. We have to enter this new week with a heart full of gratitude, with a heart full of praise, with a heart full of thanksgiving. I always remind us, it could have been worse though, but the grace of God did not allow that to happen. Most of us, the enemy would have consumed us. But the grace and mercy of God kept you and I alive till now. What shall we render unto the Lord than to give him praise? Than to worship him? Please type in something so we know we can hear me. I don't know if you guys are hearing me, but say something, please. Say something. So I will know I'm not talking to myself alone. Say something. Let's communicate. Let me encourage somebody. Say something. If you can hear me, please say yes. Or say hello or something. Let's know that we can hear each other. Okay? Please, please, please. We need to do that. Let me see the volume here. If it's on. Let's see if this volume is on. If you can hear me. Please say yes, you can hear me at least. Acknowledge that. I just want to motivate us, you know, Sister Miriam, you're welcome. I want us to be still. I want us to recognize the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to recognize the power of the tongue. I want us to recognize the, the miracle working God, what he can do. He said he would do exceedingly abundantly above your imaginations and whatsoever we can even imagine he's above it all he's a faithful god what is it that is weighing you down that is keeping you on that bed you don't want to get up today and go around or just walk around your neighborhood something but you're confined in bed today because of one situation or the other can you trust god can you just praise him in the midst of those trials? Please, if you can hear me, say amen or say hello or something so that I will know we can hear each other. Because the one I did earlier today, the volume was muted. I hope it's not what is happening. If it's the music part, we can't copy the music. You know, we don't have the right, but we can use those music to uplift each other's spirit. When the spirit of the Lord is upon David, he danced like he never danced before. 
when the Spirit of the Lord is upon the children of God, who has been through some challenges of life, who has been through it all, who, who has like we have never has before. So when the Spirit of the Lord is among us, we we'll worship God like we have never worshipped before. Why? Because he deserves all the glory. Can somebody hear me? The Lord deserves all the praise. Can you all hear me? Please, if you can hear me, say yes. I don't know if I'm muted again. Please, 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 if you can hear me, say yes. I'm typing and I'm asking if you all can hear me. Please, we need to acknowledge that. I just want to tell us it's a new week. I want us to be strong. And I want us not to forget some important things about life. We are pursuing money so much. We are pursuing wealth so much. We are running around so much trying to make ends meet. Let's not forget ourselves. I need us to take this week, as you enter the new week, to be able to take care of you. Get, get some time off to rest your head. Like I told myself, after this broadcast right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off my church clothes, you know, lay down and rest a little bit. Because we deserve to rest. We're supposed to rest, you know. Let's just give the body a little bit of rest. And for those of you that are taking medications and all that, don't quit your med because we are doing praise and worship and they think it's a miracle like that. No, you have to tamper it like little by little as you worship God and commit that health into his kingdom, into his will the Lord will revive things. Many people are taking blood pressure, medications, you know. A lot of us have one thing or the other going on. Take time to care for you. Go for your regular checkup. I'm guilty about that. I have to also go for a checkup. But most of us, we don't do that. We just wake up. The Lord give us the breath of life. We'll keep on running and we're walking 24 hours nonstop. We don't want our body to shut down and we we'll say, oh, I'm a child of God. Why would this happen to me? Sometimes we need to take time to care for us, this body, to nurture this body, to give this body some break as we worship God. I don't know if I'm talking to myself. Nobody is talking, you know. I don't understand, but uh, let me see. Okay, okay. I think you guys can hear me. My cell phone is on. That's wonderful. God bless every hand that is sharing. I see that almost 30 something people have shared. It's a blessing. We just want to share this encouragement with us. You'll be surprised. Somebody on your contact needs someone to encourage them. You'll be surprised. Somebody around you that you will share this broadcast to needs someone to encourage them at this time. And before you know it, they will be encouraged. Take time, children of God, to relax a little bit. Don't walk yourself up like from January to December, you know. At the end of the day, most times we don't even have accountability while we're working so hard. Sometimes we don't have a place we stock the money and say, okay, this is where the money is packed. You know, nothing is happening to the money is packed here. I can't touch it. Why do we talk so hard? I know we have to pay bills. I know we have to take care of family members. I know we have to do a lot with money. But money is not everything. Though he answers all things according to the word of God. But at the same time, it's only those that are alive and healthy that can pursue it. And the process of running around without taking care of yourself. If anything happens to you, people will move on, you know. We will move on with life. And it's sad. So I just want to let us know today that starting from tomorrow, Monday, think about you. When you get off work, don't start branching in many places just to waste your time. Go home. Spend time with your family. Relax and get some rest for the body. Oh, Queenette, God bless you. 
God bless you. You can hear me. Awesome. That's what I'm asking everyone watching to do. At least tap in that you can hear me and when in this together, I'm talking and nobody's typing. I'm like, okay, did they meet my broadcast again? Thank you, Quinet. God bless you. God bless you, sis. You are the best. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. So please, we need to nurture our body. We want our body to prosper just like our spirit will prosper in the Lord. We want our body to be strong. You know, when the mindset is overwhelmed with too much issues, too much bills, too much trouble, too much struggling in life, your body gets weak at the same time. Because the body and the brain is all connected in one. The process of thinking affects the body itself. So let's just take it easy. This new week, as we go about our business, let's think about us. Let's think about us. Let's think about how do I get some rest? God bless you too, Sister Quinnette. You are the best. God bless you. How do you get some rest? Force yourself to rest this body, this flesh. You know, every time we complain of not paying bills and then comes another day, the bills are still rolling in. Those pressures are still there, but the body is overworking. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. We need to learn how to shut down the body by lying down. No matter what is going in our world, no matter how the challenges are coming, you tell yourself, I am not standing out of this bed for the next two hours. I'm going to lie down and rest the blood so that the circulation of the blood inside can take a break. You can imagine how the car drives all the time and then we park the car. But we human beings who are, who are really moving on, non-stop, our brain, even when you're sleeping, most of us don't sleep and sleep because we have so much in our brain. We have so much going on. We have so much happening and we cannot rest ourselves. Even in the night when we're supposed to sleep, we are thinking some people are at work. During the day, they can't even sleep because they have children to take to school and pick back from school, you know, do homework, cook in the house, clean. So many things are in our life and our being. And we we'll forget to rest this body. Then when we get sick, we want to say, God, why did I get sick? Oh, God, why am I sick? We need to nurture ourselves. I was supposed to take a patient to hospital right now. But I looked at myself after service. I weighed my body. I'm like, okay, this thing can wait till tomorrow. Why do I have to do everything perfect? Even in the process of doing perfection, you're still not going to be perfect in front of people. You cannot please everybody. That's the message I want to pass across to us this new week. You can't please your husband. You can't please your wife 100%. You can't please those children 200%. You can't please no human being 100%. They will always demand something from you at every given time. Learn to tell yourself the truth. My body needs some rest. That's what I told myself as I was coming back from church. I've not even eaten but I told myself, you know what? I'm just going to give my children their food and do my broadcast and go to bed. Eat and go to bed. Patients, hold on. Your case can be handled tomorrow Monday. Today, being Sunday, I can go to emergency. You know what? They will see the patient and will come back. But it's not an emergency situation right now. I can manage her till tomorrow. So I decided to rest my body after this broadcast. We need to listen to ourselves. Some people walk, 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 you know. It's been a, a scenario like most nurses are dying at their place of job. Thank you, Kunet. Can somebody at least say something, share this video, invite somebody? Some people go to work, especially those in the healthcare field. They work from one job to another. They work from one job to another. And you're asking them, how much do you have in your account? You must have saved millions in that account. And they tell you, oh, I'm building a house here. Oh, my brothers are here. Oh, my grandfather is here. Oh, my this is here. Guess what? Some of them die at their field of work because the body gets so tired. And people die. The people you are fighting for to meet up all their needs as if you're God, they live their life and move on with their lives. You are married to a woman that doesn't want to help you do nothing. She wants you to 
be the breadwinner as the man. The Bible said you are the head of the family. You work three jobs as a man. You feed your wife and children. You take care of your uh, mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother-in-laws, your own family, every extended and distended and uh, extra extended families, just for one brother. And the sister is sitting down there being at home mom, and she cannot even wash the restroom like every time. She can't even keep the living room intact. Each time you come to their house, it's still disorganized. But she doesn't have a job like you and I. When this man dies, guess what? Everything will turn apart, and the center cannot hold. This lady will start struggling. She will end up sleeping from one man to another to make ends meet because you didn't learn how to work together, nurture yourself, and give somebody a break. A man or a woman working too much, one day the body will break down. It's a take of this week. I want to encourage you to take time for yourself. We cannot praise God and worship God and worship God and praise Him and want miracles to be happening. The Lord is speaking to somebody right now. You need time out. A friend of mine in church, most times when we get up from church, we always want to hang out, you know, eat lunch or something, maybe go to the movies or something before we go home. But today, I was tired. I want to go home and see my boys, you know, make sure they eat and then rest myself, do my broadcast and go to bed, as God will have it. She also says, Sister Jane, honestly, your sister want to go home and lie down. I'm tired. I've been running around all through the week. I'm so tired. I said, sis, that makes the two of us. Please go home. I'm going home too to rest. We both went home. Tell yourself the truth. Stop pushing and pushing and pushing. When things fall apart, honestly, Santa cannot hold. Nobody will take care of these children if you leave them behind because you're doing three, three jobs, four jobs to make sure everybody in family is okay. These people you are doing this thing for will not take care of your children when you are not here. That husband who is working and working, when you die, brother, this lady will still move on with her life. Let's come to a compromise level whereby we can spend time to rest this body. A female that is the breadwinner of the family. You're working so hard while your husband is sitting down being lazy, I would say, because God has blessed each and every one of us with something tangible. But most people have refused to pursue their destinies and their destinies will be aborted. This lady, you walk, 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 walk. Let me tell you something. You are drinking blood pressure on behalf of working too hard because you want to show that you can carry the family. You are drinking blood pressure. Your husband is not drinking blood pressure. You are having high blood pressure every time. You come back to work, you drink blood pressure med. You go back to work in the morning, you drink blood pressure med. Why the guy is looking handsome and drinking beer on your behind? If you drop at work and die, he will marry another woman and the woman will come and ask her children, what the heck happened to your mother? You're here eating my food. May the Lord forbid and we say back to sender. I know it sounds very good when we rebuke the devil. I know we love it when we say devil is a liar, we will we'll send you to the pit of hell where you belong, Holy Ghost fire. It sounds good, but Holy Ghost fire doesn't work when we have the ears and we refuse to hear. Back to send that will not work when you don't know how to adjust yourself. I rebuke and I reject. I shall not die young, I shall not die with sickness. But you are overworking the body. The Bible said, heaven, help those that help themselves. I am begging of us. I am begging of us. I am pleading. I am pleading. Let us take time to nurture ourselves. Take some break out of your busy time and rest this flesh. I don't know why this is a topic right now. Amen, Sister Quinette. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm speaking based on my own understanding too, that my body needs rest and I have refused to go out right now. If there's no food in this house, I will drink garlic and go to bed. I am not driving outside again to that one rest. Do I have things to do? Of course, if I don't have nothing to do, I have my clothes to wash, but I'm not going to wash them. The laundry is right there. I just have to throw them and 
start the wash out the wash, but I refuse to do that. I'm not going to lift this hand and to lift it to eat. Take off my clothes, light hand and sleep. That's all I want to do today. That's what I want to do today, be Sunday. Tomorrow we will start the week, but today I want to rest. Tell yourself sometimes, call up from work and say, you know what? This job, leave me alone. Let me just rest today. You can't see yourself working seven days a week. One month, two months, three months, jumping and you think you're strong. You're praising the Lord. You go to church, you speak in tongues. You, you, you rebuke the devil. You cast away the demons and you, 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 you shut the highest Holy Ghost fire in the church. Why you are not resting that body? When that body shut down, then you want the pastors to come and start laying hand on you. No, this is the moment of reality. This is the moment of praise and worship. Give yourself a valuable time and a valuable treat. Tell yourself, you need rest. I'm going to stay. If you don't want to light hand, put the TV on. Play gospel music. If you don't want to play it, just watch African movies. Sit down in the living room with your children. And just stay home and rest one day. It's so sad. And so painful. How we work so hard. How we trust so hard, and yet everything is not perfect. What does that tell you? Riches are made by God. It's not how much you can work. Some people work three days a week because they trust God and they have a very good job. Don't ask God to give you jobs and you see yourself having three, four jobs. You put them together, they are not even worth one job. That is not how we should operate as children of God. We need to rethink. Ask God for a very peaceful business, a peaceful job that he should direct your part. He should direct you to your destiny helper. There are people who have only one job and they take care of everything in the family and they're extended. Still, they don't work up to seven days a week. Some of them work two, three days a week. And the other four days, they spend time with their family. May the Lord open our eyes. May the Lord give us the directions. May the Lord bring our destiny helpers. May the Lord rebuke the devourer on our behalf. May the Lord give us peace of mind that surpasses all peace. In the name of Jesus. Honestly, I see some of my friends, to be honest with you, that work so hard. I used to be like that. I like, tell God, I am tired of overworking myself. Lord Jesus, what is it? It's not that my bills are all completely paid. Still, my health is not that healthy because I'm walking, walking, walking. You get in your bed, you don't even have the strength to worship and praise God. You just want to sleep and snort the next morning. You carry your handbag, you go back to work. Just like that. It goes to a point I say, Father God, if it's my bills, are there some that I can cut off to minimize too much expenses? That's a very good one. Some of us are doing so much things that are involving too much money and we, we, we get ourselves overworked to meet up every need. Forgetting that there is God who can meet all your needs at any time. We don't give him the opportunity to come in and dwell among us. That's what we need. Please share this broadcast it's just an encouragement moment and praise and worship. Share it. Let's tell ourselves the truth. For those that are lazy, that think, oh, well, she thinks she can walk. Let her be walking. It's not fair. If you are a man watching me right now and you're sitting at home watching your wife do three, three jobs, four jobs, it's not fair. That is not right. It doesn't matter if she's the one that's making more money. Your little change added to one job or two that she will be doing will bring peace of mind will bring joy because when she comes home she will be able to spend time with you as a husband she will be able to do what she's supposed to do for the children she'll be able to take care of her own self you know you see some of these ladies who work so hard and we don't even look like people who work that hard that's the saddest part of it you make so much money some of these women I'm telling you guys, some of them make so much money, but when you see them, you can't even take food from their hand. They are so unkept, but they're making money, making money. Where is the money going? In expenses, building house, buying cars, doing this, doing that. They cannot maintain themselves. They don't even take blood pressure, vitamins to keep their body together. They look so old and so stressed out, but they have all it takes like money. 
What are we working for? What is it? Are we going to go to heaven with all this money? And tomorrow you see somebody like me now, well, I have my little business that I'm running and doing my little stuff. I am tired of running from the street. Man, I did those things seven, eight years ago. It was not funny. To a point, I have to rethink and rewind my brain to tell myself, Jesse, it's about time you sit your behind that and look for something that will give you peace of mind, not overwork you. We all want to invest. Sister Sylvia, darling, you're welcome. If you can hear me, say something, please. So I know you can hear me. Sister Kunet, I appreciate you for letting me know that you can hear my voice. Please, everybody, say something. I'm encouraging us to quit praising God and worshiping God in the midst of ignorance. Yeah, that's the right word. I get to a point that I can't even see myself overworking because my body needs rest and nobody will tell me the truth except me. You and I need the rest. You can't work seven days a week. You don't have time for your children, no time for your husband. Oh, sis, thank you so much, Sister Sylvia. Thank God you can hear me. I want us to take time out to rest. Take out time to hang out with your girlfriends, with your family members on a weekend, with your husband. Take time to go to a movie with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your sisters, or somebody. Forget about the bills for a minute. Forget them for a, a, a second. Go to the movies, watch something very funny, and just laugh. Come home and sleep. We have been working so hard. None of us here now that is watching me is a millionaire. Because if you're a millionaire watching me and you cannot send me money, that's not right. That is not fair. Because we're all struggling to do better. And then we're overworking and over pushing ourselves. Yes, Sister Sylvia, she said to rest and take care of ourselves, honestly. It is the good thing. If you don't check your blood pressure and you're working every day, you're not having the, the smartness of at least waking up. I have my blood pressure cuff by my best side. Thank God I don't take blood pressure. And uh, thank God the way he made me, no matter all that I'm going through. I always get to the point to say, no, what, whatever. I can't kill myself, man. God, I'm tired. And that's how I handle my own situation. When once I start telling myself, I am tired of it, I'm dropping it. If it's a human being stressing me, I am dropping you for real. Just within a twinkle of an eye. Because I'm not going to watch you stress me to death. I have children to take care of. Thank you, Sister Sylvia. God bless you for marrying me. It's the grace of God. For everything I've been through, I can't help myself. Every day, Every minute. Sister Queen has said, when we put God first, a little effort we put will yield a great increase. God bless you, sis. That is absolutely the truth. When you put God first, Sister Queen, at your 100% right. Every little effort with God in the midst of that effort, you will be surprised where that effort will take you. That is what is happening to me. Yes, Sister Sylvia. Sister Sylvia said, you bet and change clothes and every day and hair every day. <laughs> sis, you will join me. God bless you, sis. What can we do? I am tired. The bills are still rolling in. You pay the bill from first through the fifth. Most of your bills you want to pay. Before two, three weeks, the bills are back in the mail. I'm asking, okay, this is a cost right now. Most of us have not paid our houses off. We are still paying that cycle payment every month to the city. You pay city tax, you pay state tax, you pay this tax every day. Guess what? If you drop because you are working seven jobs, the city will repossess the house that you have paid all these years. They will not say, okay, your mother or your father has been paying this now that they passed. Let me give it to the children as donation. Nobody cares. You need to wake up and care for yourself. Tell yourself the honest truth. When you need rest, take the rest. No matter the busy of life, no matter that job, they can go to hell, I'm sorry, and fire somebody, nobody cares. God will give you a better one. But when your body is speaking to you, oh, Pastor Nena, thank you for joining me all the way from Nigeria. I humble myself, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you so much. When you don't recognize yourself 
and you walk, 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 no time for you to rest. When the body rests itself, you end up in the hospital. Yes, sis, life goes on without anybody. The highest they can do is, oh, ah, uh, sorry, your kids, your mom passed, oh, sorry, your, your dad passed. That is it. Within two, three weeks, nobody will call those children to see if they are eating or not. So tell yourself the absolute truth that you need to rest. We can't praise God and worship God and we'll, we'll, we'll use our own hands to destroy ourselves because we're looking for pleasures of this life. Because we want to be wealthier than every other person. Because you want to buy the same car that your neighbor bought. Because you want to buy the best house that your neighbor bought. Because you want to build mansions all over the world. Because you want to be the best among your peers and you overwork yourself. God bless you, Pastor Nena. You work yourself to the point that you don't even recognize you. You work yourself so much that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you feel sorry for your own self. But you look in your bank, you have so much money. Money do not buy joy. Yes, we need money to do things in life. Can we turn our prayers around and say, Father, give us the best of our destiny help us to help us to reach our goal. Can you tell God to connect you to that very job that will give you that money in a peaceful way that you can invest and you can do things without killing yourself? This body needs rest. Our body needs rest. Just like our mouth needs rest. I have learned to tell myself, shut up. I said that last week on the broadcast that we should learn how to Tell ourselves, shut up, don't speak. That is how you nurture yourself to be more productive. Yes, Sister Queen, I'm being honest. I got to a point in my life right now that most times before I speak to people, I have to bite my tongue and I have to ask Holy Spirit, Father God, should I say this or should I shut up? And if the Lord says, shut up, I just shut up. You'll be asking me, oh, Jesse, what's your suggestion? I'm like, I don't have no suggestions. It's not like I don't have no valuable solution to what you're asking me. I do. But if I say it, it's going to bring a strain. It's going to bring a gossip. It's going to bring by battle. It's going to bring spiritual battle. It's going to bring enmity. It's going to bring jealousy, you know, enviness around my people, around my sisters, my friends, and world wishers. I would rather shut up. And let God minister to each and every one of us. Yes, Pastor Nena. If you are living and you are following this praise and worship ministration this year, and your life is still the same, something is wrong with you. If your life is still the same way that you don't know when to say, I will speak, and you don't know when to speak, then there is trouble. Ask God for that as we praise and worship God. Ask God to give you the spirit. To recognize when to talk and when not to talk. Many of us have money. Many of us have the means of making money. But we lack the knowledge of how to put those money in place to yield more money for us. So we can work less. Some of us will believe in the spirit of working and showing up that we got it going on. But the opportunity God gave you some finance breakthrough. He has a reason for it. What are you doing? with your breakthrough moment. I'm telling you guys, you don't have to know me personally like face to face for me to be your sister. You don't have to see me every day for me to be your sister. You don't have to know my grandfather's name and my mother's name and where I'm coming from. For God to use me to bless you or for God to use you to bless me. Destiny helpers can be from somewhere you don't ever imagine. I'm telling you guys, even Pastor Nena here that is watching me, I met her casually where I was working years back. She is part of my destiny moment to help her today. She lives in Nigeria with family, but she travels all over the world. This woman has been my destiny helper. She's a sister to me in the Lord. We are blood sisters through Christ. I called her. I was going through a moment of what to do last two, three weeks, my spirit said, reach out to Pastor Nena. Immediately I called her. That problem was instantly solved. 
she spoke to the husband and they took care of that problem just like that that is what i'm talking about may the lord use us to help each other so we can learn to work less and work smartly it's not how much job we have it's not how many places you run around to work that matters it's what you're doing with the sweat and the job that you're doing if the lord is with you like sister queen said the little effort that we put the lord will demand it in return for us that is the grace of god that is the mystery in the things of god he will give you so much peace in the midst of your storms don't sit back and just believe that miracles do happen gone are those days i tell people in my group especially sisters through love group i tell them don't come and tell me that oh god is a miracle god he will do it when he said he would do it oh yes now who all are children of god he's a miracle god he will do it when he said he would do it but if it's gonna be done you have to attach that miracle with action if god has spoken on your destiny if the lord has said something positive about you and i and you sit back on the same chair years and years you're not doing nothing about the word of god upon your life that destiny will be aborted and will rebuke the devil we don't want our destiny to be delayed or aborted because of our carelessness learn to identify when the lord says go yes man god bless you i appreciate this so much i appreciate it pastor nina god bless you i have peace of mind knowing that the lord is using men and women of god all over the world to reach out to me and my kids and i can't thank god enough for that that's why i tell people trust god you know when i get so into the glory of god i can't control my emotions i feel like can somebody take an example from me can somebody believe that i'm for real that god has been there can somebody see the glory of god in my life can somebody believe that god is really good in every situation can somebody see that the lord can take you from glory to glory that the lord can cause things to happen that will take you from your glory to glory that sometimes your storms in life will bring you to a place of destiny sometimes that the challenges of life can make the door to be open for you to walk straight to your father's house which is god and you will begin to realize that all these years i didn't know who i am in christ finally finally situations of life who are made or was made to break us ended up molding us in the presence of god situations of life that were supposed to tear you apart that was supposed to break me completely ended up bringing me closer to god what an awesome god do i serve I just want to beg you guys to trust God. I want to beg you this new week, don't overwork yourself. I don't know why I'm saying this. A lot of people will be dying of heart attack. A lot of people will be dying of stroke. A lot of people will be dying of one disease or the other. Not that it's our timing. You know, but when we give the devil the room to control, the devil will come in. He only comes to steal and destroy. There's nothing good about Lucifer and his workers or her workers. I don't know if it's, I'm going to say devil is a man or a woman. But however, no matter how the devil operates, he doesn't operate to have mercy upon you and I. Whatsoever challenge that the devil is bringing to your house is not for good. He brings it for real to destroy and to kill. And this is why I thank God that this year he instructed that I just do a broadcast of praise and worship and cooperate it with encouragement of words. And then we will teach about our health, you know, about blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, and all that, about diet, diet and all that, women age and all that. So much the Lord is laying in my heart to go in and start saying to us, because most of us, we need this word. Somebody have to tap you and say, wake up sometimes from your slumber those things that the enemy used to to delay our destinies he doesn't want to just delay it and then let it be tarry 
and come to pass. The enemy don't want you to see anything that the men and women of God has spoken upon your life. Devil doesn't want you to even testify. The devil is very bitter. He doesn't come for anything like temporary. He comes to destroy immediately and kill. Yes, Sister Quinnett. Sister Quinnett said, God is the ultimate. A life without Christ is in crisis. Absolutely right. A life without Christ is in crisis. You just said everything that I wanted to say, sis. God bless you. Life without Jesus is life in crisis. Crisis, when we mean crisis, the meaning of crisis in, in reality, when you go to the dictionary, is something that comes over and over and over, like no control, you know, trouble everywhere. You come out of this, it's rolling everywhere. Without Christ, that is the kind of life we live. Christ is the center that will hold those crises and tell them to be still. And everything will be still. That's what happened to me. I was running in crisis, even in the midst of trying to do good. But to a point, the Lord said, Jesse, be still and know that I am God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Then I look up, I said, Father God, it has to be only you. Last year, I will not say it was too bad. I give God the glory for all that I went through. And in the midst of all, see, this moment, I am not in any medication. I'm not taking blood pressure med. I'm not taking no medication for pain or anything for my sight or anything. The Lord brought me back, refreshed me, and washed me in his blood. And every day, he reminds me of his goodness and mercy. Every day, he teaches me. Holy Spirit directs me. The Lord speaks to me through my friends, through well wishers, through those that cares about God, through people like you and I. I am begging, let us rest. Let us rest the body. Overworking ourselves, we are looking for crisis and the devil will use it against us. Children of God, take time, take time, take time to rest. Life is too short. Life is so short. Take time to rest. There is nothing God cannot do for you if you put him in the midst of your troubles. May the Lord help us. As we worship and praise him, may his name be exalted. His name be exalted. For in Jesus' name, amen. Let us listen to this gospel music. Amen. There is nothing he cannot do. Right where you are. Where you are, lift up the name, lift of, up Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're standing in his face, how would you ask? Call his name Jesus. 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 Call the name of Jesus. 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 Oh yes. Jesus. Jesus. Turn it up for me. Jesus. Jesus, 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 there is power in the name Jesus. There is power in the name Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Jesus, yeah. break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, Lord. 
have in Jesus. You have something, Jesus. You are in the midst of finding yourself in the end of finding Christ. Oh, what a moment. I just love him. You sat on the yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worship God. This is moment of praise. Hallelujah. Worship God at this moment. Praise Him. Appreciate Him. Appreciate God. Listen up. He promised. Drop the trials and temptations. I must honor my God. In every situation, praise God. Yes, Lord. I am going to bow down and worship my God. Thank you, Jesus. Never fail me yet. Yes, it never fails. Never fail. Me never, yet. never, never fail. Jesus Christ. Never fail. Never fail me. Has Jesus ever failed you? He has never failed me. There is one. Hey, what did I know? Wherever I go, wherever I go, Jesus. Never, never, never fail, fail me yet. You know what? He will never fail you. Oh, he's with you all day. He's with us every minute. Hey, he's with you all day. Only God is with us. Hey, Jesus, you're my loving friend, my savior all the time. for this moment of praise and worship who has spent an hour in his presence and it feels so good like i just started may the name of the lord always be exalted it's very funny i have one of my admins that is a muslim i'm telling you she is so faithful 
to her religion. This girl prays three, four times, seven times in a day, constantly. And I'm beginning to wonder, like, come on now. I was telling her, I said, girl, you pray seven times every minute. You have 10 minutes to go and pray. How do you do it? But you and I, how many times do we have time to worship and praise the Lord? How many times do we spend in the presence of the Lord praising him? If Muslims can honor their Allah seven times in a day, we Christians, how many times do we spend time to worship God? That is the question. Because we have so much question, why this is not happening to us? Why are we not doing this? Why are you not doing that? Why are you not doing this? Why, why, why? But we forgot where God has brought us from. We forgot the grace of God, that that is the reason why you have that question, why? If you are not in the land of the living, you will not have the matter to say, why me? If not you, who will be going through that challenge? Every challenge that God gives to you and I, has been predestined for you and I. We just have to appreciate God in the midst of our challenges. We have to praise God in the midst of it all. We have to acknowledge God in the midst of all our challenges. It could have been worse. For many have passed to the land of the dead, and you and I have been given another opportunity, one more time to praise God, and yet we we'll ask why every day. You don't pay your bills complete for one month. You are asking God why. But you are living in the land of the living. It's not because of your righteousness. It's not because of your power. Your money cannot even buy you life. But the Lord has allowed you to be here today. The moment of praise and worship is a wonderful, wonderful moment that you don't want to play with. It's a moment that you want to uplift your spirit. It's a moment you want to realize how to count your blessings, and then one by one, it will surprise you and I, my brethren, what the Lord has done to us. Yes, our God is great, Brother Simeon, I appreciate you. Our God is an awesome God. Who can battle with the Lord? And who can speak when the Lord has spoken about you? If the Lord has ordained that you and I will be here today, nobody can change it. For those that have passed, it was meant for that moment for them to go to the glory of God. I'm a living testimony. I keep telling you guys, I love my last child last year. I lost him to death, but I know he's in the God's place now. He's an angel. The Lord allowed me to go through that, not because he hates me. I realized that later, when I started counting my blessings and I named them one after the other, I was surprised what God has done for me. If I was the one that died last year, I don't think I would have made it to heaven. But guess what? My son is in heaven. He's an angel. He did not know sin. And I give God the praise that finally I was able to be a caregiver to an angel in this land of the living. What an awesome God I serve. I heard an angel. Some of us were praying to see angels, but I had one in my hands. Now he's in heaven watching mommy on earth and praying for success and praying for good health. In Jesus' name. Please, my fans, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what is going through your mind right now, no matter those circumstances that you have no answer to it, take it to God. You know, there's a saying that people say, when you put your egg in one basket, you're going to struggle. No, 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 no. When it comes to Christ Jesus, we want to put our egg in one basket. Ask me why. Because he's the only one that can keep that basket and keep it safe our Lord Jesus is the only one that can keep our basket and keep it safe for us. It is only God that can keep everything that you give to him and keep it safe for you. Glorious is the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, my brother said. It's only God that can keep the basket of your sorrows, of your tears, of your pain, of your challenges in life of your stones. It's only God that can keep it and keep it safe. Don't limit yourself on what you want God to do for you. Go about your business praising God, appreciating him, thanking God where you are, what he's doing in your life, what he has brought you out from, and you will see that indeed the Lord has been faithful to us. 
you will understand that this moment of praise and worship we are doing for this year is not in vain. You understand that indeed God has been good to you and I. The Bible said so he pronounced his blessings upon us and we think it has not come to pass. The Bible assured us that though it tarries, but they will surely come to pass at the right appointed time. Though it tarries, but the word of God in your life, in my life, will surely come to pass. As long as God lives, whatsoever he has said about us will definitely come to pass. God is not a man that he should lie to you. And we pray that our younger age, no matter what we went through, our later days, we will enjoy life in fullness, in good health, in the name of Jesus Christ. Moment of praise is a wonderful chain breaker. This year, the Lord said we should spend time to worship and adore him, to give him the praise, and to appreciate him for where he's bringing us from. Appreciate him for what he's doing in our lives. Appreciate him for where we are right now, because where we're going tomorrow, it's only him and his grace that will take us to tomorrow. If not for God, many of us would have been swallowed by the enemy. If not for God, the enemy would have consumed most of us, but the grace and mercy of God is so sufficient. What an awesome God that we serve. The God that never sleeps nor slumbers. The God that his yes is his yes. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He said before your mother had you in his uh, stomach, before you were convinced or conceived like you and I, he knitted us in, his, in the stomach of our moms. He knows who you are. He called you by name. He knows what you are called for. He knows your destiny and where you're going. No matter how the enemy tries to pull us back, to make us stagnate, make us go back and forward, make us struggle, bring storms and challenges in our lives, the word of God will definitely come to pass. That is the wonderful message of God through praise and worship. I tell you guys, no matter what I'm going through, I will praise God, I will worship him, and I will break through. As we come in accord, in agreement, to worship God, to praise God, in the midst of all these storms and challenges, our breakthroughs will surely come to pass. God is going to break every chain. God is going to cause things to happen to bless us. When the enemy bring a storm, the storm, instead of breaking us, it will take us another dimension of praise and worship. That is God for you. Take time to take care of yourself. Speak to yourself, your soul, and your being. When you're tired of struggling, take time to rest your body so that the enemy will not break you down physically. It's when you're physically fit, emotionally fit, spiritually alert, that is when you can face the challenges of life and you will conquer. The grace of God is sufficient. I'm going to let us go. We'll spend an hour plus on this broadcast. For those of you that have shared, may the Lord bless you. For those of you that contributed some encouragement words so others can read it, may the Lord bless us. For those of us that are yet to share, please share, share, share. Go to our website, our Sisters True Love Group, and subscribe, like our page, and comment. Encourage somebody. The Lord is passing by the city. He will not pass us by this year as long as we held on to him. The Lord is in the business of blessing people. And we're not going to let our weakness, our unforgiveness, our unconfessioning life to bring setback anymore for us. Go about your business, forgiving everyone that have offended you. Confess your sins. Appreciate God in the place where you are. And he will take you to another level. The Lord has promised us in Psalm 23 that he will set a table before you and I in the presence of our enemies. That is the promise of God. It will surely come to pass. Let the sense of God say amen to that. Our God will set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And those who have laughed at you will come to laugh with you and say, what an awesome God you serve. That is the promise of our God. Take care of yourselves. Check your blood pressures. Eat when you're supposed to eat. For those that have ulcer, make sure you eat and adhere to the dietary information that has been given to you. 
Don't go about running around in the morning without food in your stomach and you want miracle to happen. Eat. Praise God. Don't worry about tomorrow. God will take care of tomorrow. It belongs to him. If you're taking medication, don't just quit your med. Just rapidly. Tamper it. Take it slow by slow as we praise God. You present your case before him. You slow down on the medication and slow down on the stressors of life. Those things that are causing stress in your life are the things that are increasing your blood pressures. Pray for God to give you the spirit of sound mind to know the differences. Above all things, God bless each and every one of you for joining me live at this particular time. I love you guys so much. And like I tell you all the time, don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Don't let your situation tell you something else. Jesus cares for you and I. He loves you so much beyond your imagination. You just cannot understand. If not, why would he give his life for you and I to live? It's just ignorance that is making us defeat. May the Lord have mercy. May his name be glorified. And that cover each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Any match watching, any eye watching on this broadcast and think they will use it against us, will always say, may the Holy Ghost fire answer in Jesus' name. I love you all so much. You all stay safe. And go about your business with your shoulders up, knowing that Jesus really cares about you. You are a VIP, very important personnel in the presence of God. Don't let nothing tell you otherwise. You are a VIP in your father's house. Blood of Jesus Christ, Sister Quinnett. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. On behalf of Sisters True Love Group International, we say God bless each and every one of us. And the good testimony, one of our sisters in Abuja had a baby two days ago, a baby girl. For Sisters True Love Group International, that's our first child for this new year. And we celebrate that baby and we cover that child with the blood of Jesus Christ. Love you all so much. Love you, Pastor Nena. Love you all. Mm. Bye, everyone.